Our uh, text this morning is found in Luke chapter 23. So if you would turn to the book of Luke chapter 23, we have been in a series of studies on the seven sayings of our Savior from the cross. And we come this morning to that seventh and final saying of our Lord from the cross. And that's found in Luke 23 and verse 46. Luke 23, verse 46. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father, we thank you for being the great and wonderful God that you are. And we thank you for your scriptures. You've given them to us to learn from and to live by. We thank you, Lord, for this wonderful place that we have to come week after week to study your word. We have our Bibles open and we look to you, Lord, to give us understanding of that which we read. And we'll be careful to give you all the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. These are the last words spoken by our Lord Jesus before he expired on the cross. These words were an act, first of all, of contentment on his part. They were also an act of faith and an act of confidence and an act of love. The person to whom he committed the precious treasure of his spirit was his own father. His spirit, which was at the point of being separated from his body, that spirit was committed into the hands of the father. 1 Thessalonians 5.23 teaches us that man is a tripartite being. He is spirit and soul and body. The spirit appears to be the highest part of our complex being. The spirit is what particularly distinguishes man from the beasts. And the spirit is what links man with God. Zechariah 12 and verse 1 says, The Lord which stretcheth forth the heavens and layeth the foundation of the earth and formeth the spirit of man within him. So God has placed his spirit within each one of us. Amen. In Numbers 16 and verse 22, he is therefore called the God of the spirits of all flesh. At death, the spirit returns to God who gave it. The act by which the Savior placed his spirit into the hands of the Father was an act of faith. He says, I commend my spirit. It was a blessed act and it was designed to be a precedent for all of his people. He spoke those words with a loud voice. He spoke so that everyone could hear. And that his enemies who judged him, saying that he was destitute and forsaken of God, he spoke it so that they might know that it was not so any longer. Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. While he hung upon the cross, he spoke seven times. 
Seven is the number of complete completion and the number of perfection. At Calvary then, as it is everywhere, the perfections of our Lord Jesus were displayed. Seven is also the number of rest in a finished work. In six days, God made the heavens and the earth and on the seventh day, he rested. And that's the way it is here with our Lord Jesus. A work had been given him to do, and that work was now done. Just as in the sixth day, that it brought to completion the works of creation, so the sixth day of our Savior, he said it is finished. And just as the seventh day was a day of rest and satisfaction, so the seventh utterance of our Savior brings him to the place of rest in the hands of his Father. Seven times the dying Savior spoke. He spoke in the hearings of God and men and of angels and of Devils, and he cried out in triumph, It is finished. It is noteworthy that this closing cry of our Savior, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit, that this closing cry had been spoken by the spirit of prophecies long centuries before there ever was an incarnation. In Psalm 31, we hear David's son and Lord saying in anticipation, In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in thy righteousness. Pull me out of the net that they have laid privily for me. For thou art my strength. Into thy hand I commend my spirit. Thou hast redeemed me, O Lord God of truth. In connection with each one of our Savior's utterances from the cross, a prophecy was fulfilled. First, he cried, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And this was in fulfillment of Isaiah 53, verse 12. Secondly, he promised the thief on the cross. He said, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. And this was fulfilled by the angel to Joseph. Third, to his mother he said, woman, behold thy son. And this was a prophecy that was fulfilled by Simeon. Fourth, he had asked, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And these were the identical words from Psalm 22 and verse 1. In the, in the fifth word from the cross was, I thirst. And this was a fulfillment of Psalm 69, 21. In the sixth word from the cross, he shouted in triumph, it is finished. And these are almost the exact words from Psalm 22. Finally, he prayed, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And he was quoting from Psalm 31. Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Here we see our Savior is back again in communion with the Father. For a while, that communion had been broken as the light of God's holy countenance was withdrawn from him. But now these three hours of darkness had passed and was ended forever. Up until the cross, there had been a perfect and unbroken communion between the Father and the Son. On the cross, at the beginning, the Lord Jesus is still found in communion 
with the Father when he cried, Father, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. His first words then, which was, Father, forgive, and now his last words, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit, between those two utterances, he hung there for six hours. <clears throat> the first three hours were spent in suffering at the hands of man and at the hands of Satan. And then three hours were spent in suffering at the hands of God himself. During those last three hours, God had withdrawn from the Savior, causing that terrible cry, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? But now it's all done. It's all over with. The cup has been drained and the storm of wrath has been spent. The darkness is past and the Savior is once again in communion with his Father when he says, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And how blessed it is that his Father is also our Father. Amen. How unspeakably precious that I can look up to that great and living God and call him my Father. Amen. What comfort there is in that title. What assurance is given. God is my Father, therefore he loves me and he loves me just the same as he loves his Son, the Lord Jesus. God is my Father, and He loves me, therefore He cares for me, and He will supply all of my need. God is my Father, therefore He will see to it that no harm comes to me, yea, that all things will be made to work together for my good. Oh, that His children would enter more deeply into that precious blessedness of that relationship. Amen. They would then joyfully exclaim with the apostle, Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the children of God. Amen. Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Here we see a purposely designed contrast. For more than 12 hours, Christ had been in the hands of men. He had spoken of this to his disciples when he forewarned them in Matthew 17, 22, when he said, the Son of Man shall be betrayed into the hands of men and they shall kill him. He made mention of it in Matthew 26, 45, while he was there in the garden of Gethsemane. It says, Then cometh he to his disciples, and saith unto them, Sleep on now, and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sin. The angel made reference to this on resurrection morning, saying to the women, He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. That's a quote from Luke 24 and verse 6. This received its fulfillment when the Lord Jesus delivered himself up to those who came to arrest him in the garden. Christ could have easily avoided arrest. All he had to do was leave the officers of the priest prostrate on the ground and walk quietly away. But he did not do so. The appointed hour had struck. The time 
when he should submit himself to be led as a lamb to the slaughter, that time had arrived. And he delivered himself into the hands of sinners. How they treated him is well known. Scripture says with wicked hands they crucified him. But now it's all over. Amen. It's finished. Man has done his worst. The cross has been endured. His appointed work is finished. The Savior has voluntarily delivered himself into the hands of sinners. And now he voluntarily delivers his spirit into the hands of his Father. What a blessed contrast this is. Never again will he be in the hands of men. Never again will he be at the mercy of the wicked. Never again will he suffer shame. He commends himself into the hands of the Father, and the Father will now be the one to look after his interests. We don't need to dwell on the blessed sequel to all of this. Three days later, the Father raised him up from the dead. Amen. Forty days after that, we read in Revelation 3.21 that the Father exalted him high above all principalities and powers and every name that is named and set him at his own right hand in the heavens and there he now sits on the Father's throne, waiting till his enemies be made his footstool. Amen. Because one day, before long, the tables will be turned. The Father will send back the one that the world had cast out. He will send him back in power and in glory. Then the situation will be reversed. When he was here before, man dared to arraign him, but then he shall sit and judge them. Amen. Once he was in their hands, then they shall be in his hands. Once they cried away with him, but then shall he say, Depart from me. And in the meantime, he is in the Father's hand, seated on the throne, awaiting his pleasure. Our text says, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said this, he gave up the ghost. Here we can see our Lord's perfect yieldedness to God. He showed this all the way through. When he was hungry in the wilderness, after a 40-day fast, the devil urged him to make bread out of the stones, but even then he said to the devil that he lived by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. When the mighty works which he had performed and the message he had delivered after it failed to move his listeners, he submitted to his father saying, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hath revealed them unto babes. When the sisters of Lazarus sent to Jesus to tell him of the sickness of their brother, instead of him quickly getting up and going to Bethany, he waited two days where he was, saying, this sickness is not of death, but for the glory of God. It was not natural affection which moved him to this action, but it was the glory of God. His meat was to do the will of God. The God who had sent him. 
He submitted himself to the Father in all things. We see him in the morning and the scripture says, rising up a great while before the day so that he might be in the presence of the Father. We see him anticipating every great crisis and preparing himself by pouring out his heart in prayer. We see him spending the very last hour before his arrest. We see him on his face before God. How rightly could he say, take my yoke upon me, upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly. And as he lived, so he died, yielding himself into the hands of the Father. This was the last act of the dying Savior. How thoroughly it was in keeping with the whole rest of his life. It showed his perfect confidence in the Father. It revealed the intimacy that there was between them and it exhibited his absolute dependency upon God. He has left us an example. In death, he committed his spirit into the hands of his father because his spirit had been in the father's hands all through his life. So let me ask you a question. Have you, sinner, committed your spirit into the hands of God? If you have, then your spirit is in safe keeping. You can say with the apostle, I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. That's from 2 Timothy 1.12. If your whole life is yielded to God and death should overtake you before the Savior's return to receive his people to himself, it will then be easy and natural for you to say, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. I once had a dream. I had already determined that when it came time for me to die, that I would be careful to say what Jesus said. Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. But in my dream, when the time came, things happened so Fast and there was so much confusion that all that I could think of was Jesus, here I come. <laughs> he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit, and that's what I meant. I'm sure the Lord understands that. Here we see the absolute uniqueness of the Savior. The Lord Jesus died as no one else ever died. His life was not taken from him. He laid it down himself. Amen. Perfect master of himself, unconquered by death, he cries with a loud voice, with great strength, and delivers up his spirit into the hands of the Father. And in this, his uniqueness is set forth. No one else ever did this or died like this. His birth was unique. His life was unique. And his death also was unique. In laying down his life, his death was different from all other deaths. He died by an act of his own volition. Who but a divine person could have done this? In him it was proof of his perfection and of his uniqueness. He died like the prince of life. Father, into thy hands 
I commend my spirit. Here we can see the place of eternal security. Again and again, the Savior spoke of a people which had been given to him. And when he was arrested, he says, Of them which thou gavest me, have I lost none. On the cross, Christ hung there as a representative of his people. So we can view this last act of our Savior as a representative act. When the Lord Jesus commended his spirit into the hands of our Father, he also presented our spirits along with his for the Father's acceptance. Jesus Christ did not live or die for himself, but for believers. Amen. And when he commended his spirit into the hands of the Father, he commended our spirits along with his own. So we must here see Christ as gathering together all of the souls of the chosen and making a solemn offer of them with his own spirit to God. In the Father's hand is the place of our own eternal security. He committed his people into that hand, and there they are forever safe. Amen. Jesus said, referring to his chosen people, My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and none is able to pluck out of my Father's hand. That's in John 10, verse 29. Here then is the ground for the believer's confidence. Here then is the basis of our own assurance. Every spirit that has been born again is eternally safe in the Father's hand. His care all along has been for his soul, so he thinks of it now and with his last breath he commits his soul into the custody of God the Father. So our cry is not, Lord Jesus, receive my body and take care of my dust. No, it's, Lord, receive my spirit. Amen. With our Lord Jesus, we can say, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 That completes our study of the seven sayings of our Lord from the cross, and I hope you have enjoyed this study. Amen. They're all recorded on YouTube, and you can always go back and review them at your own time. Three or four years ago, we did a study on the life of Daniel, and next week we're going to pick up that study once again and look at Daniel along with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Amen. Brother Red, would you lead us in prayer? Oh, hallelujah. Oh, what a Savior. Amen. Praise Father, Lord. we're so thankful today that we can call you our Father. And Lord, we love you this morning. We come in here today to worship you. And I pray, Lord, as Randy comes, that the Holy Spirit will lead us into all truth, Lord, that we might learn of you today. We'll give you thanksgiving in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.